coming. We're going to have a wonderful time. The gathering. My moments of intolerance, I think, are when I'm impatient. About 11.45 in the morning when I'm just running on coffee and no food. We all have them, whether they're minor intolerances against certain foods or types of clothing or, you know, people or religions. I got hate, a hate letter from a meat eater. Intolerance is a refusal to see someone else's perspective, where they're coming from, why they view the world the way they view it. To me, I think one of the key issues is blame. You know, blame, pointing the finger. I'm so happy you brought up the word blame because, blame, you know, there's a little song that goes, blame is the name of the no-win game. <laughs> it is a dead end. And love is the complete opposite of that. Intolerance, I would say, top of the list is evil. And what is evil? The person has no other comprehension, feeling, or understanding of what other people feel. And just know that if he was going to be walking in front of me, I could love to tolerate to slap him upside the head with love. Just really, really give him a good one. I have a 1.4 year old son and at times I think that I'm going to scream. But somewhere your tolerance or your intolerance starts, you know, like yeah. maybe I'm tolerant of a lot of things but there'll be something that just offends me, you know, and that'll make me intolerant, right? Yeah, like and everybody's threshold is different. Oh yeah, like toilets in India, I'm totally intolerant of toilets in India. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I do support equality of men and women. I do support that, but sometimes I feel very, very happy to see the toilet seat all the way down. Maybe I wouldn't describe it as intolerance, but I have had issues with strong women, <laughs> including maybe not issues. I don't know if I could say they're issues. Maybe uh, headbutting. <laughs> but it's part of it, all of it's in good humor. I am dealing with so much of this in my own relationship. I'm like, I'm just completely like this, it's like <laughs> And I'm completely intolerant of his intolerance. <laughs> so I think that there's a, when it comes to the sexes, I think men can be jovial with men and, and be like in a way where they understand it's like joking kind of thing and being playful. And when a man and a woman do, uh, you know, try, gets to that same kind of, it's that the women don't always think it's funny. <laughs> And quite recently, I was thinking about the war that's starting now, <clears throat> that's going on. I'm thinking, how come this can't be solved? If we don't solve it, it goes right into World War III. When I'm watching the news and I'm watching men killing men mostly, or you know, throwing things or screaming or burning up flags or something, I, I think, what are the other men watching these men thinking when they see that? And are, how many men are questioning the whole thing? When someone launches missiles at you, you have to retaliate. You can't not retaliate. So on the other hand, tolerance has to do with measured response. And the thing is, you could say, well, how tolerant do you need to be when people are, you know, what, 230 missiles a day? a day being shot. And I, I watch TV and I think all the women were all going, oh my God, all of us, I know we are, we're all freaked out at what we're seeing the boys doing and the boys with their toys as Helen Caldicott talks about. To people in Lebanon who are being hurt, the Israelis who are being hurt, I don't have a clue how I can help them. The Iraqis who are being hurt, I don't have a clue how I can help them. We should all only take what we need and live simply. And uh, I think a lot of the world's problems are, you know, not just on the geopolitical, but if in your personal relationships, you're selfish. And what it really gets down to is oil. You know, there are 20 trillion barrels so of oil. So you think it comes down country. to a competition of resource? Well, that's one of the factors, definitely, compensation yeah. resource, right? And uh, the Shiites can afford the rebellion because, you know, 
Ma Ama Dinama said that the oil is going to go up to $200 a barrel. Well, when it goes up to $200 a barrel, you know, it's going over the top. Where is he who knows? And here we are now. Boys are all seemingly getting wound up. They want to do it. You know, it feels like a beginning of a football game right now. A lot of our troubles in the world today are rooted in that. Sometimes I see things happening and I know I can't help it and it's not my fight, it's not my thing. But if I see somebody hurt, I always want to go and help though. I know if I go in and, and say this or say that, I may be changing some karma that they need to go through. And if I go and help them, then they don't learn their lesson. And if they don't learn their lesson, they may have to go through a bigger hurt next time to do that. I started to recognize through watching my son all of the, all of the growth patterns of humanity, the growth patterns of, of the baby steps that humanity is taking. But it was in recognizing how innocent he was and how much even more I needed to give him, how much more I needed to be tolerant of his behavior. And I was equating it to humanity, equating it to how humanity is, is growing and changing and needing my my tolerance, my tolerance and my love and my intention for humanity to be all that it can be. I think that we have many people on the planet who we have to be very tolerant of because of their development and where they stand at this time in life here in the 21st century. I just wanted to share this, uh, my great idea about war peace today. And uh, war peace is not just Western, uh, westernizing everybody or um, make everybody behave like Americans. All culture has good and bad. I'm not very happy when people say, God bless America, God bless, well, God bless everybody but Arabs, you know, because they don't treat women right. Nobody's perfect. So if you come from a state of unconditional love, then intolerance, in a sense, isn't possible because you understand the drives and motivations of another human being. When the Chinese were invading the Potala and Lhasa, and everybody was completely freaked out because they knew they were going to capture His Holiness and imprison him, all of a sudden they, they look over in the in this one area of the Potal, and there's His Holiness bowing down, praying, thanking the armies of Mao Zedong for all the great lessons that they were teaching him. He sees compassion and love in everything, everything. Forgiveness is, I think, one of the highest qualities that anybody can really develop within themselves. To come from happiness and to take care of yourself and your family and your loved ones and your extended family, to put all your time into positive things as opposed to revenge or negative things or getting even, that if everyone would realize that, then that would be a global solution. <laughs>